Hi, welcome back. My name is Attila Beröt. This is already the 13th lesson in our solar energy course. As you see, we already covered most of the solar topics. In the first few chapters, we learned about the sun, the sunlight, it effects, the history of using the solar energy. We also saw how can we convert solar energy to heat energy, and my colleague was talking about how can we convert the solar energy into electricity. We spent three chapters for the different solar cell technologies. And last time we evaluated the advantages and disadvantages of using solar energy. In this topic, we will see the different possibilities of using solar energy at home. Do it yourself. The pursuit of use of solar energy is not new. It was self-evident even in the ancient times that the free energy can be utilized. Plenty of ideas emerged for the utilization of the solar radiation with home-built simple devices. In the next two videos, I will show you some of this equipment. But only those that have been proven to be easy to make, don't cost a lot of money, and can be useful accessories for our home. So I will explain in detail how can you build a solar water heater, solar water distillation, solar pool heating, beer can collector, and in the next video, some other DIY ideas. In the first few minutes, we will see how can we build a solar water heater step by step. The solar water heater can be seen on this slide is one of the simplest device and it doesn't need any special technical skills so it can be built by anyone with minimum financial investment. The size is the standard size, 2 times 1 meter, the same as other devices which can be purchased on the market. On this slide, you can see the necessary materials for building it. First, you need to buy approximately 30 meters copper pipes. 30 pieces of T-ships copper joints, 5 pieces of copper jacks. You need to buy some wooden planks for the box, 8 pieces of 2 meters length, 2 pieces for the bottom, 2 pieces placed on length and 1 piece cut in half. They should be 20 centimeters wide and 2 centimeters thick. So you need 8 pieces. You need some wood screws as well, 0.6 cm thick glass sheet for the box cover, some angle profile, metal, aluminium or plastic for the glass sheet fixing, approximately 6 meters, glass wool with aluminium foil for insulation, and one tube of polyurethane foam. You need some silicon tubes for insulation purposes, some material for supporting the device, as you see, and of course, you need some tools for building it. The first step is building the wooden box. You can see the required materials in the first point. Take care and choose the proper materials to avoid later issues. The wood planks must be dry in order to avoid cracks during the process of drying. Take a jigsaw and cut six pieces of the eight pieces of wooden plank in half. So you will have 12 pieces of 20 centimeters wide, one meter length planks, and two pieces of 20 centimeters wide and two meters length plank. As you see in the photo, lay down and fasten 10 pieces of 1 meter plank together. This will be the bottom. Then fasten the 2 pieces 2 meter plank and the remaining 2 pieces of 1 meter plank as a side wall. The corners of the box are strengthened with wood screws. When the box is fastened together, the whole interior must be painted in order to avoid humidity absorption 
and damaging in time. The eventual cracks and the joints of the wooden planks are sealed with polyurethane foam in order to prevent any water entering inside the wooden box. The step two is the construction of the copper pipe system. You can see the required materials and tools in the first point. So first, fit the T-shaped copper joints with the copper jacks. At this stage, the copper pipe cutting tool is a very useful device because it allows a precise cutting. One must be noticed that at this stage of fitting together all these parts, any measuring error will be multiplied at every step of the welding process. For example, a cutting error of 1 mm at the first cutting will end at an error of 10 cm at the end of the pipe system. After the copper joints and the jacks are welded, the next step is to cut the 14 pieces of 1.9 meter length copper pipes. The next step is to lay down the pipes to the floor and insert the copper pipe into a previously prepared joints and to add all the copper parts together. One must notice that the most difficult part of this step is not twist the pipes into the joints in order to avoid cracks because this could lead to fluid loss and subsequently to system failure. The next step is painting the metal plate which will be the back of the system to black. Then let the paint to dry. After all these pipes are welded together, clean it thoroughly. It is important for the painting. Then fix the copper pipe system on the metal plate in order to obtain the best heat transfer from the plate to the pipes. The whole copper system must be fitted at both ends and the middle with metal clips. So the box and the pipe system are also ready, so you can move to the next step, which is mounting the glass hole isolation. Before installing the copper pipe system into the box, it must be isolated. One of the best solutions is to use glass hole with aluminium foil. The use of glass hole is recommended because it has excellent insulation coefficient. It is simple to use and to handle. One must notice that the best isolation results are obtained if the glass wool is not pressed because the isolation is made by the air trapped within the glass wool fibers. Eliminating the air may lead to isolation coefficient failure. The side of the glass wool with the aluminium foil must be fixed toward the metal plate. The role of the aluminium is to reflect the heat back to the metal plate and the copper pipe system, thus increasing the heat coefficient. The glass wool can be fixed with glue or using special clips. After fixing the isolation, the copper pipe system can be installed into the wooden box. Take care, do not flatten the isolation, so use some spacer or simply with the use of screws. After that, paint the whole interior to black. You should use heat resistant paint. After all the inner components are mounted together and the paint is dried, comes the step four, which is mounting the glass sheet on the wood box. If the upper part of the sideboard is cut at an angle, the glass sheet can be directly inserted into the profile of the wooden box. If not, the easiest way to use an angle profile, iron, aluminium or plastic, which is fixed with screws on the side of the wooden box. In both cases, the glass sheet should be sealed using universal silicone. This step is very important one because this side will be the upper part of the system. The correct sealing will prevent any further water infiltration. Then, the copper pipe exhaust must be also sealed with silicone, preventing water to infiltrate. 
and also preventing heat escape from the box. And the final step, after the elements are fixed into the wooden box, the system can be fixed to its final position. If the position of the system will be permanent, it is recommended to fix the system in concrete. The whole system is fixed using metal angle profiles and are tilted an inclination between 25 to 45 degrees facing southward. After fixing the final position, the system can be fitted to water supply system. This slide can be familiar from a previous video. I mentioned that with the energy from the sunlight, salts or other contaminants can be separated from the water because only water evaporates, salts and contaminations not. After evaporation, the fresh water can be condensated. The water goes from steam phase to vapor and you have the pure water. There are huge devices to produce fresh water, but there are really cheap ways to have some small amount of clean fresh water. Let's see what can be done. DIY solar water distilling. This is a simple but great idea. It is made using two clear bottles and glue or tape. You just fill one bottle with dirty or salt water, then connect the second bottle and set it to the sun. Within a few minutes, the water begins to evaporate and the other bottle collects the clean distilled water vapor. Make sure the bottles have an airtight connection. Prop up bottles at a slight angle so as the dirty or salt water starts to evaporate quickly. Of course, this works best in bright sun. The left bottle contains the dirty and the right one the salty water. As you see, the result is the same, fresh water. So, let's see how can you do it yourself. First, remove the caps and drill a hole in each cap. Then glue the caps together. Finally, Add the dirty or salty water you want to clean, screw the lids on and prop it up an angle into the sun. After a few minutes, water droplets will form in the collection container. That's clean and fresh distilled water. Do not wait for liters, but for a drink it will be enough. The next great idea is what you can do it yourself, is the solar pool heater. Maybe you remember in a previous video I was talking about it. As you see, the solar heater is not a complicated device. It consists of only three main components, the pool water, the pump and the solar heater. The action is also simple. Water is pumped from the pool to the collector. The collector transfers its heat to the water going through it and the heated water is returned to the pole. Here you see the required materials. You need approximately 60 meter roll of half inch polytubing. As the base, approximately 1.2 times 1.2 meters plywood panel. Approximately 30 pieces to 20 centimeters of longer tie wraps. Approximately 3000 liter per hour submersible pump or just simply use the original pump which runs the cleaner. In case you want to place the collector to the roof, you will need a bigger pump. For connecting the tubes, a slightly larger than half inch portion of rubber or malleable tubing about 5 cm long and black paint. As a first step, get the sheet of plywood. You can buy 1.25 times 2.5 meters sheet at the hardware store and have them cut them down to size for you. This is advised because it is easier to transport black to your house. When it is at home, let's paint it with black or with other reflective paint. 
As a next step, you have to prepare the holes in the right pattern where you can tie the pipe. So find the center of your black board by drawing a line, line corner to corner from each side. They will cross in the middle. Don't try to get too close to the middle or your tubing will kink and screw up your water flow. Never do square corners as the kinking and restriction in water flow will defeat the exit tubing you will be able to fit on the board. Depending the tube you use, the holes have to be in different distances. If you use half uh, tall tubing, then drill your holes using three or tall separation. The next step is mounting the pipeline on the base, which is the most time and nerve consuming task. The hose is pretty kinky, so first unravel the hose as much as possible. You can start the piping at the outer edge of the frame and wind around or at the center. I did both and neither was easier than the other. Don't forget, otherwise you have to start over that you have to leave approximately three meters of dangling pipe to run the water to and from the pump and pool. You will need to remember to do this for each end of the hose. Do not tighten the five wraps as uh, you will need to adjust your windings and ensure proper spacing later. You can use screw heads to act as clamps to hold the piping down. Another idea for holding down the collector tubes would be using copper strings. Once you are sure that all the tubing is fit perfectly, tighten the tie wraps and trim. To improve on the heat exchange, you can add a one times two frame around the outside of your collector and drop a sheet of plexiglass on top. This will dramatically increase the efficiency of your solar heater by trapping the heat inside the box and preventing wind from coming it off. After finishing the task, you can connect the collector to the pool. If you want some extras, I can recommend a thermometer and a timer. The timer is useful anyway to turn the pump on during the day and off at night, or a thermometer which can regulate the pump to switch it off in case the water temperature is lower in the pipe than in the pool. Last weekend, I spent some time by building a low-cost pool heater. Guided by a quick idea, we figured out at home to do a pool heating, but without having to go to the store. All the parts needed to build it were at home. One of the most important elements is the hose but only a thick walled transparent silicon hose was found. Since this is far from optimal for heating, I was very curious about the result. We found a large plastic sheet in the garden that became the base. On this, we laid in six line approximately 40 meters hose. The fixation was sold with oiled copper wire. Below the holes, black rubbish bags were subsequently pulled under the tubes to improve heat absorption. When we were done, we wrapped it all with four pack foil. The pump used was the pump of an old washing machine. The result was very good despite the far from optimal hose. With continuous operation, the return water became 45 degrees Celsius. However, the water in the system warmed to 78 degrees after standing for five minutes. On this slide, you can see another option for this idea. In case you don't want to bother with the box, you can use the combination of capia tubing and clear bottles. The most practical is the 20 millimeters KPA tube as the inner diameter of the mouth of the most pill bottles is just that. After using it and comparing the data, the following statement can be made. For water heating, the pill bottle system is 15 to 17% more efficient 
than the traditional naked PVC pipe. In case you want to further increase the efficiency of the system, you need some milk or soft drink box. Just simply cut the boxes in half. With applying the cut boxes below the tube, the peak temperature of the system peaked at 55 degrees Celsius. This increased the efficiency of the system by an additional 20%. In total, the result is not so pretty, but in some cases, it can be a good alternative to the box. DIY solar air heating collectors are one of the best solar projects. They are easy to build, cheap to build, and offer a very quick payback on the cost of the materials to burn them. They also offer a huge saving over equivalent commercially made collectors. Two of the more popular designs are the pop can collector and screen absorber collector. The pop can collector uses columns of ordinary aluminum soda pop cans with the ends cut off. The sun shines on the black painted pop cans, heating them, and air flowing through the inside of the can columns pick up the heat and delivers into the room. The screen collector uses two or three layers of ordinary black window insect screen as the absorber. The sun shines on the screen and heats it up, and the air flowing through the screen pick up the heat and delivers it to the room. In the next couple of minutes, I will show you one of the most popular DIY solar heater, the beer collector. The step one is to gather the supplies. So first, drink some beer. Because you need plenty of aluminum cans, try to do it not in a row, otherwise you will get drunk. Attention. Beer cans are made of aluminium generally, but there are some cans made of iron. You can test these cans by a small magnet. So you need high heat black paint. The same type I mentioned many times earlier will be perfect for this too. Then some high heat glue, some wood for frame and piece of plywood for the back, foam board for isolation, and of course tools wood screws, and as a cover, a clear polycarbonate sheet. When you have the desired amount of empty cans, you need to drill holes in the cans. Be very careful with these steps. The edges of the cans are really dangerous. There are different methods to do that. Cut or punch holes. My opinion is to punch the holes is the easiest way. The shape of the bottom hole is the form of a star, has two stars to provide turbulent airflow, which will enhance the heat transfer from the can wall to the passing air. Also really important that you need to clean boxes immediately because those are very fatty. And also the warm air would be really smelly. The next step is to glue the can's columns. Cans are designed to stack, so this part is easy. Use any heat resistance adhesive and glue the cans into straight columns. For this, you need some kind of form to place the cans in with the glue sets. I used a couple of ports nailed together to form a V, as you can see in the third picture. But the length of PVC pipe that's sold in half is also suitable. As I said, the adhesive must be heat resistance at least up to 200 Celsius. I used silicon car. It is a good high temperature material that remains a bit flexible and does not stink or outgas after its initial cure. Keep in mind that the cans must not only be glued together, but also sealed so that air does not leak out between the can joints and into the collector box. So put the first can in the form with the top pointing up, apply a bit of glue around the bottom of the second can and press it down onto the first one. Repeat this process until all the can for one can column have been glued. Place a weight on the top of the column to maintain a little pressure with the glue sets. 
After drying, the glue will be adequate, elastic, and stuck. The adhesive drying is very slow, so it is necessary to let it dry at least for 24 hours. The box was made of timber. Depending on the desired size, cut the timber. The reverse side of the box was made of chipboard. For thickening, I developed planks into gadgets. After you cut the chipboard, fasten other wooden box components together. The rock wool got into the cassettes. These are, are covered by thinner chipboard. The installed insulator is visible in the left below corner. Already it has been covered on the opposite part. It is necessary to surround the holes with planks at the inlet and outlet to fixing the insulation. The box will be placed outside, so before assembly, it got preparatory timber protection, and then I also painted it. The step five is to build the main fold, and after that, install the inlet and outlet vents. As you can see, there are main folds along the top and the bottom of the collector that distribute the air evenly to each can column. The main fold will also hold the can columns securely in position. I used thin plywood for the main fold wall. A 60 mm hole saw turned out to be good fit for the cans to nest into a both top and bottom. It is important to take some care in laying out the holes that accept the cans to get an even spacing, as you can see the pictures below. When the centers of the holes are marked, tape the two main holes together and drill the 60 mm holes. After this cut holes in the back of the collector for the inlet and outlet vents, push the starting collar into an opening you cut from the front side. It is important to seal the vents properly. Before you paint the surface of the cans, you have to clean them. So the next step is preparing the cans columns for painting. I just easily wiped them down with aceton, but a more careful preparation may be in order to ensure the paint stays well attached over the long hour. Fit the can columns into the bottom main foldboard using the collector case to hold things in place. Paint the cans and the absorber assembly with a high temperature black paint. I used barbecue paint in a spray can. All of the inside of the collector box and the main phone boxes should be painted black. So you can paint the cans out or already mounted into the box. When everything is complete, make sure the main fold areas are sealed up so that airflow does not leak from the main fold into the collector box. Let the completed collector box and absorber sit out facing the sun without the glazing on a good sunny day to bake out any gases. To cover the front face of the main fold, I used a piece of clear plexiglass so that the sun shining on the manifold area would be absorbed by the black back of the manifold box and have its heat recovered. For long life, in this high temperature environment, polycarbonate with UV resistant coating would be better choice than the plexiglass. So cut the proper size of plexiglass and put some seal around the edges of the box. Now place the glass on the box and fasten it airtight with other profile and screws. Today, we started an interesting part of the course where I try to show you some DIY ideas which you can use the solar energy at home. In the next video, we will proceed with some other simple design which makes fun and possibly reducing the electric bill. For example, I will show you how can you make a solar bottle bulb, a solar food dryer, and some type of solar cooker. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.